So here we go. Let's hope this ship loaded correctly. It's called Charge from Anonymous 2. And while well, there it is, that looks cool. Uh, you guys can't see. Here we go. This is the Charge Them ship from Anonymous 2. Uh, wow, that is a cool looking ship design. I wonder if Anonymous did the actual visuals because that looks really cool. Uh, what's the, what is this called? Advanced Destroyer Type A. This ship was designed for maximum abilities, all systems, higher system levels, and charged weapons. To achieve this, the designer made some interesting sacrifices. Low crew and odd weapons leave this ship risky at first, but it grows strong. Take her out to Uchi. What is Uchi? Is that a sushi place? Let's see. Hold breach beam. A chargeable beam weapon does two system damage, but no hull damage. Good for disabling systems and venting. And has a 50% chance to breach. Wow, a breaching system damaging beam. That's cool. Wow, it has all, it does have all the systems. Teleporter, cloaking, charge flak artillery, mind control hacking, long range scanners, advanced shield, shield navigation 2, a fast shield charger drone. Wow, this is really strong. It's a sushi place downtown. Well, I don't think we're going to go downtown. Um, I live north of Dallas. She lives west of Dallas. I have a feeling we're not going to want to go somewhere downtown. Why does this guy look different? Why is his coloring different? That's cool. Drains oxygen from rooms. Slow moving. No damage from lack of oxygen. Okay. Um. All right. Well, let's see. Do we have Gibbs for the rebellion? Wow, those are pretty good Gibbs. Um. There's these little chunks that come out. <laughs> One more time. Now, first I thought it was like humans, but it's actually just pieces of the ship. Very artsy Gibbs. That's right. There's a little Korea town in Carrollton. It's pretty great for a day. That's true. That's true. I just went by there the other day. I'll mention that. Um, there's that Korea town in Carrollton. One second. One second. I know I'm doing real life stuff in the middle of my stream, but Carrollton. That. is supposed to be cool and has lots of restaurants. There we go. I'll mention that. Good suggestion, Flurchin. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yes, there is a mod to kill ourselves. We have weak shields. I don't know if this is on purpose, but even if it's, even if it is on, it on, is on purpose, the ship is so OP with so many systems, I can't even mind that. Or even if it's not on purpose. Chad is here for my dating coach. That's right. You saw a streamer getting Korean barbecue. I want that. I've tried Korean barbecue once. And I don't think the place I went to was the best. And I don't think I chose the best stuff. But I, I wouldn't mind trying some good Korean barbecue again. I know, Twitch Watchers known for their dating proficiency. <laughs> Alright, Pirate Rigger with drones. Yeah, so chat, if I am occasionally looking down, checking my messages, you all know why. Alright, well, first ship shield, this kind of sucks, actually. Uh... Turn on this drone, though. Okay. There's a Beam Master. Oh, that's a cool um, shield, too. Damn it, it hit my weapons and my drone control. All right, these shield. I said it wasn't that bad of a... Uh, 
start, but um, if we fight a Beam Master first jump, I might just have to restart this, because this is a ridiculously bad start. This is like worst possible first ship for a shieldless ship. Frickin' Beam Master. All right, I'm restarting. This is my fun day. I don't even care. I'm not, I'm not going to mess with BS like that. First jump, Beam Master against a shieldless ship. I'm wondering if these no shields is on purpose or not. Has all the systems. I forget what the description says. I don't know. But this is my fun day. I'm not going to kill myself over BS. First jump, Beam Master against shieldless ship. Isn't this the polar opposite of the introvert discussion from the first run? Not a complaint, just an observation. I don't know. Is what? The fact that I'm trying to get a date while streaming? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, the no shield is probably on purpose because it's fast shield drone, I'm guessing. Oh, wow, that artillery fires really quickly. So I should have had the artillery on. I didn't actually know how fast that artillery fired. It's firing way faster than I thought it was going to. <clears throat> what did you miss? You missed a um, Beam Master first jump on the shieldless ship. And me trying to plan a date by text while streaming. Yes, it's a fast shield charger. It charges faster than normal. If its name is correct. Does it tell us the timing of the charge time of this? It doesn't actually tell us. <laughs> Look at the description of it, though. Level 2 is somewhat scary. Fifty. Uh, level 3 is a lot of damage. Level uh, Level 4 is going Vulcan mode. Well, if I didn't have to send, spend, uh, save up my scrap for shields... Upgrading some early, um... OP artillery could be a potential thing here. You don't think even a higher speed makes it regenerate shields faster unless something in hyperspace allows for it? I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know if it's actually charging faster or what. Uh, I don't need missiles. You know what? It said this ship starts with everything. You know what it doesn't start with? It actually doesn't start with backup battery. It's kind of crazy. I wonder if I'm missing something about the theme behind this ship. It said it just has all the systems, so charge them all, right? Is that, isn't that what it said? Something like that? No, it's reading, so I already forget what I read. And we did have cloaking, and I didn't even cloak that first fight last time, so that was basically a misplay. The ship, I'm not used to a ship having literally all the systems, so that's my excuse for not cloaking when I should have. Uh, you were hovering over Ripper to see what it does and then got confused why it wasn't working. Long day. <laughs> no Twitch integration yet for FTL. Um, hover. You can do that in some games like Path of Exile. I think you can hover over like a build or something. You not seen anything like that personally though. You have seen some crazy things like a defense type drone that instead of firing lasers spawns a super layer when enemy ship's attack comes in. I guess that's super laser when enemy attack comes in. Just pretend it's sector 8 and you're OP on everything but have no power. Okay. Well, I do want to save up for shields, and I do want to go to the store to sell... What is this? Advanced Navigation 2. Any beacon in a sector. Holy crap, that's overpowered. Okay. I can skip the stress and go right here, actually. And I feel like we have a lot of blue options for distress, though. What we don't have is giant alien spiders blue option now. Damn. And it doesn't even look like it takes extra fuel to um uh, to do these extra jumps. That's pretty OP. Pretty OP. Oh damn it, there when my artillery rifle is about to fire. I stop? 
Fighting Beam Masters, man. Sector 1. This doesn't pierce any shields, does it? Alright, drone offline at least. Uh, fix my shields, Nizzle, please. Fight safe until the drone comes back online, which hopefully will be very soon. Uh, Nahaku, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to stream. Okay, well, we got some really good rewards going into the store. Uh, Nebula Jump does give us extra jumps. Yes, it makes me be able to hit that in seven. So Nebula then store, and then we can skip a jump if we don't see a ship fight there. Long range scanners plus this uh, improved advanced FTL navigation is going to be crazy strong. Yeah, free crew, baby. All right. Go heal and then get on doors. Field drone seems to be about eight seconds. So is that faster or normal? I don't know if that's the same or lower or anything. You think that's normal? Okay. Maybe Anonymous thought upping the speed would make it charge faster or something. All right, there's a backup battery. Very nice. Definitely don't want to sell any of this stuff, right? No, that stuff's OP. Whoa, backup battery is 60. I was going to complain that that's expensive, but, uh, which it is. But I can't really complain about anything. Oh, man, look at the shield cost. So this was definitely intentional. 100 scrap for one shield barrier, 10 for the value point, then 105 for two, 110 for three. The ship is supposed to not have shields or be very expensive to get those shields online. So that's a trade-off for having all of the systems, I guess. But I probably got one shield just to not die to beam masters and then start investing in this artillery. Yes, I said it. I said invest in artillery. It's a, if you want to make me buy an artillery, you know what you do. You, uh, you make it be a flak artillery. Actually, I guess what's good about this is that it's only one, it's one less power. So maybe it wasn't thought of to be faster, just one less one less power or something, I don't know. Uh, the moment you buy shields, you'll get Missile Masters. Well, I'd like that because I have clone, cloaking and fast shields, so I'd be kind of fine with that. Um, problem is I don't have power for the fast shields. I didn't come up on in time. I don't even know if it does. It does. I'm afraid the laser hits first. It dodges. Okay, didn't double dodge. That pulls pilot. Perfect. Twenty-two drum parts. So you go heal. Uh, there's a crew kill here. If I'm patient and turn off my artillery. Wait, artillery's helping again, chat. Artillery's helping. Oh no. Uh, although. Yeah, this is actually really good crew killing. Just create a bunch of breaches and kill his O2, and this should wreck some crew. Just wanted to say, been watching for a while, your YouTube no-plies runs, and wanted to know which of the NG cruisers is better between NG A or NGB. NG A is better than NGB. I don't like either of them, because 
you know, drone offense on NGA and NGB is forever alone. But if I had to choose, I still think NGA is better, even with how rough our last loss was of the Shriek on it. All right, let's get power. Oh my gosh, the power's expensive too. Okay, everything very expensive on the ship. Upgraded fields. Or maybe I started with a lot of power, and that's just the normal power cost there. I think speed is my main artillery buff. Oh uh, yeah, when you upgrade artillery, I think it makes it charge faster. I'm pretty sure that's how that's working. What are you hacking? O2, okay. Pretty much safe from damage here, I think. No O2 for me, that's right. No O2 for me. I could train my weapons up if I wanted to. You know what, let's do that. Let's uh let's do quick Do I want to do training? This ship is going to be really strong. Um, no, I'm not going to cheese any weapon training. It's fine. Yeah, Ripper Beam is really good for a lot of things. Disabling auto scouts, crew killing. I'm probably going to wreck the boss with crew killing if I keep it. Only three weapon slots. I do like how even though we have all the systems... Um, with three weapon slots and two drone slots, it means the UI is not quite overlapping as much as some other uh, builds we've seen with too many system slots, basically. I can go like one, two, and then jump to there, no problem, if I'm understanding this correctly. I've not tried this yet. I hope I'm not miscalculating here, and I'm going to end up multi-diving here. I uh, got lost earlier due to chat scroll. You're working as hard as you can to get the April Fool's mod ready for the next Monday, so no need to do any Star Trek ships today. Oh, okay. Sorry, I did miss that, Zach Dog. It probably got lost in the scroll. My bad. Should be a fun kind of funny and not a very hard kind of funny. All right, cool. So I'll make sure to play your ship next week, but not one of your ships today. So I'll probably play... Um, I think uh, I have a ship from... Game, think, and talk all at the same time. Uh, who is it? I have to look at my list. Uh, Eagle's Eye. I have some ships from Eagle's Eye. That's. Bro, just killing my drone. That's rude. So I'll play one of Eagle's Eye's ships today, probably. Yeah, it's you. It's you, Eagle's Eye. Um, let's do this. There. You go heal. Not a terrible deal, but I'd rather crew kill. Oh, he outrun. <laughs> he outran the beam. You're too fast, Zoltan. You're too fast. I never saved you on weapons, no wonder. Okay. Uh, destroy and salvage it. Although I do know that a delay gets me... Nah, let's just get free stuff. I can... I can do something. I can jump wherever I want to. Uh, 45 scrap store. I don't want to sell anything, so we just want scrap. So, one... Actually, I can just go one, two, three. If this advanced FTL navigation really just lets me jump anywhere at any time in any sector, or in a sector, I should just be able to go scrap, 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 one, two, three, four, and that's safe. Holy crap, that would be insane. This is such a good augment. <laughs> it's just OP. 
I can afford more power? True. But I do have a potential store option I could do. Ooh, two outposts in a row is really nice. Um, I'm gonna hack... Weapons here. I just realized we could have been doing, um... Kingsala maneuver. Hack weapons. Actual weapons. Shoot weapons this entire time. It's a superior navigation without long range scanners part. Uh, your superior navigation, so it's the same as Alan? Okay. Yeah, it's like your mod with out the extra fuel cost, I would say, as well. But in one, in two different augments instead of one, like yours is, I guess. You want an FTL speedrun with that augment. <laughs> yeah, right? I'll be uh, a little bit, uh, a little OP. A little OP. I didn't say it uses extra fuel, so I hope it doesn't. Guess we'll find out. Does it say it uses extra fuel? Any beacon in the sector. It doesn't say that. Uh, do I buy power? I'm going to decide if I go to the store, then I'll see if I buy power. Swiss cheese ship. The set right. This is, this is the run for all the people who love breaches. Free engine hacks. So you're free to go do that. Good. 70% dodge is good. Who doesn't love breaches? Hold on to your butts and hold on to your breaches. Neighboring beacons, it should be one fuel, but for more distant ones, it should be two, three, and so on. Is that like a is that a hardwired mechanic in FTL? Because I feel like I've played versions of FTL with advanced with um, an augment that lets you jump anywhere that doesn't cost extra fuel. So I don't I don't know. She's got huge tracks of land. Don't dodge. Got it. Or crew killing all of the things. Uh, to the tune of Peaches by the Presidents of the USA. Breaches come from a beam. They were pit there to be mean. The only thing I remember from that is beautiful peaches. Peaches for me. Da -da -da, peaches. Peaches for free. That's that's all I remember, so. I don't remember how the start of that goes. You're right. When I hover over, it says minus two. You are right about that. Okay. Uh, let's go solar flare into the exit beacon because it'll be less fuel. Or I could go here and buy fuel and then jump there. I don't really want to sell anything, though. Let's just get as much scrap as possible. Uh, let's get power. I feel like I wanted to upgrade my artillery because it's a flak artillery, but I also want to save for backup battery. Uh, let's just get the hack because that makes us safe. Oh, hacking is slightly different cost too. Okay, that is more expensive. Maybe not yet. Ah, do I want the artillery upgrade if I'm crew killing a lot? I probably do for this asteroid field fight. Probably will end up hacking their weapons. He just come in a can, they were put there by a man in a factory downtown. Yeah, like I vaguely remember it, but I just I don't remember how it goes. That's not 
It's not ringing the bells for how that melody goes for me. I remember being some very simple melody that I can't... I remember it being something that I can't remember. How does that ever make sense? I don't know. Okay, let's, uh... Ghost guy. Okay. If I kill this guy, I mean make him run away, I guess. Okay. Gump sat alone on a bench in a park. My name is Forrest, he casually remarked. Yes, if you want me to know a melody, uh, do it in Weird Al terms, and I will get it. <laughs> what's the What's the Weird Al version of Peaches? I don't think he ever did that one, so... I can't... My brain can't think of the melody if, other than the beautiful Peaches. Peaches for me. That's all I can remember. Yeah, he didn't do peaches. Yeah, but he did do lump. My name is Forrest. He casually remarked, "He's Gump. He's Gump. What's in his head?" Uh, Zoltan or Uncharted? We have long range scanners. Let's go Uncharted. Weird Al should cover the Mario movie Peaches song, huh? I feel like he doesn't do songs that are already comedy songs. And Jack Black basically already made that a comedy song. So. Although maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Peaches and some of the other ones he does kind of are comedy songs or something, but. Turn this off. I can kill this, no problem. I think. Although he probably has an NG. But it's the same band. Um, that does lump and peaches. Okay. I also feel like Weird Al doesn't actually do multiple songs by the same band that often. Why did that door stay open? That was weird. Like, he did two by Michael Jackson, and... Is there any other band he's done multiple songs by? Band or singer? Um, there's some, there's, let's do some Weird Al trivia. Which artist has Weird Al done multiple covers of? He's done Eat It with Beat, uh, Beat It became Eat It and Bad became Fat. Um, what other bands has he done multiple, or artists has he done multiple covers of or, uh, parodies of? Madonna, he did. I think I'm. Uh, that's not. I think I'm alone now. That that wasn't Madonna. Was was it? Like a surgeon. I think he only did like a surgeon because she asked for it. I don't think he actually has done anything other than like a surgeon. Done Eminem a couple times. What are they though? Because I feel like the couple times are in polkas, and I kind of am not counting polkas because polkas aren't full aren't, I don't think of as full parodies so if we include polkas he probably has done some artists multiple times couch potato was his one that wasn't a polka okay yeah I have a feeling if we include polkas we'll have more answers than if we don't include polkas. I think Michael Jackson might be the only one he's done to that doesn't include polkas. That's kind of surprising, you think?
Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Um, like, I did Miley Cyrus for a uh, party in the CIA. I don't think he's done another Miley Cyrus. He did Lord, uh, Lord with Royals, Moonfoil. Only did that one. Because, I mean, he usually only does the songs that are, like, the super, like, top one on the charts. Uh, I don't know where the, wherever his last crew is hiding. Aluminum foil is so good. I mean, I, I think all of his stuff is good, so <laughs> I agree. Amish Paradise was Coolio. He only ever did one of those. Um, who was the artist who did, um, like, White and Nerdy? What other raps has he done? He did White and Nerdy. Um, I feel like there's another one that I'm not thinking of. Tommy James was Think I'm a Clone Now and Alimony. Okay. Well done, Factoid. I'll take your word for it because I don't know that artist. I know both those songs, but I didn't know that was the same artist. I thought I Think I'm a Clone Now, which comes from I Think I'm Alone Now. I thought that was a female artist, honestly. Unless Tommy Jones is a female artist. But I don't think it is. I don't think that's a female artist. Um, what was I going to upgrade? Don't need power for days. I need 60 scrap for a store to buy backup battery. Tommy Jones wrote the original. The Tiffany version is a cover, but it's more popular. Oh, that's why I hear a woman singing in my mind. It's Tiffany covering that, huh? Okay, that I did not know. I'm learning some of my own Weird Al trivia today. Um, uh, God, I am low on power. Okay, fire in the door room. Hopefully we'll get that in time, then this will make this fight safe. Good. Um, you love Weird Al, but damn, this question got you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one, isn't it? I feel like Factoid's answer is, apart from Michael Jackson, I mean, some of his older stuff, I don't know the original artist very well because I was a kid not listening to pop music, so that's my, my uh, excuse for not knowing. Like, MacArthur Park is frightening in the dark. He did Jurassic Park. I don't even know who the original artist was for that song. I know it was some famous song way back when. But, like, I I think even if you told me the artist for that, I wouldn't know that person's name. I wouldn't recognize that artist. Alimony is Billy Idol's Moni Moni, so it's not written by Tommy Jones? Uh, MacArthur Park was recorded by the original Dumbledore. Uh, what's that guy? Richard something? Was that his name? God, I don't, want, don't know what to upgrade. I guess I just get power right now since I'm in half power nebulas all day. All day, er day. Yeah, but he had a band, right? I don't think the band was called Original Dumbledore. <laughs> what a great band name that would be, though, right? They knew way back then that Original Dumbledore is going to be important in the history of pop culture. You never knew that fun fact of the day? Yeah. I remember that being talked about in chat at one point, way back when. Richard, what's his name? Richard something. Shogi would know and could tell me if he was here. Same actor who was in... Um... Gladiator, I think. Uh, Richard Harris, thank you. Money, Money by Tommy James and the Shundellas is the original. You didn't know that Idol remade it. Okay. Google's saying he did two Offspring songs. Oh, you, that might be right. Uh... I think that might be right, and I can't remember what the Offspring songs. Pretty Fly for a White Guy, yeah. 
and laundry day come out and play keep them separated I don't remember laundry day keep them separated <laughs> that sounds like weird Al though I don't remember that one I don't know if I've ever heard that that parody I wonder if that's one I feel like there's a lot of weird Al songs that didn't make on onto his albums and I feel like that might be one of them I don't think Laundry Day was on an album. It's kind of like he did a parody of... I don't know. He's done some parodies where the original artist said yes, but their producer said no, but he'd already written the song. So he just released it for free to not make any money off it. Just went straight to YouTube or something. And I would guess that maybe that's something like that. Appears to be an unreleased song. Interesting. I wonder if it's available to hear anywhere. Weirdal has tons of unreleased songs. Yeah, he probably does. And I've heard some of them on YouTube. I haven't found all of them. Okay, I have enough for backup battery and I have this combat drone to sell, so this time I will jump here. Heavy laser one's great. Do you have a backup battery? You don't. How much do I upgrade our weapons? 40, and that's actually pretty cheap. All right, do that. Do it this way. Uh, I will buy two fuel. Care about system repair drone? I could probably sell that. I think there's like one blue option with system repair drone. If you included polkas, there are lots of double ups. So you think there really aren't a lot of direct parodies that were on albums? Yeah, and that's I guess what my. I would have to clarify that statement is that were released on albums that were by the same artist. It feels like maybe Michael Jackson and whoever that guy Tommy James is might be the only two. If we, I bet you if we included unreleased things, there would be a lot more double ups if like he did two on Offspring. He probably did. He probably did multiple Beatles songs that are unreleased because I feel like there might be one Beatles tribute or something that I remember, but I have a feeling Beatles songs are really hard to get the rights to or permission to do stuff about or parodies of and stuff. How many drone power could I buy? It looked like a metric F ton. Oh, I didn't really look. I'll check in a second. In my... It's my single guy, all right. Whoops, I cloaked my own flak. Let's take damage here. Oh, good. Holy... Free Heavy Laser 1. I shouldn't have bought the Heavy Laser 1 now. Buy one heavy laser one and get one for just one penny. Uh, and Tommy Jones is really not even directly being parodied. Do you think Al parodied Tiffany and Billy Idol? Then a bunch of polka and style parodies of the Beatles, yeah. Like he did a style parody of Bob Dylan. I think it's just called Bob. And um I don't know if he's done other Bob Dylan songs. I feel like Bob Dylan is one of those singer-songwriters who's wrote so many songs that other people have covered that I wouldn't be surprised if there was other Bob Dylan songs that he's parodied the cover of or something like that. Parodied the, the cover that got really popular kind of thing. One of those unreleased songs was a song, I think it's just called... which I'd never heard the original song until I heard Weird Al's version. And then I looked up the original song and found out, wow, what a weird original song. Uh, yeah, Crash Test Dummies, it's just called mm. And I don't think I'd ever heard of the song until I saw Weird Al version's cover, which is basically about people trying to get famous. And the, the, the video is of like, 
like Lorena Bobbitt and uh, what was the ice skating fiasco between those two girls from the 90s or whatever kind of dates that dates that parody the Hamilton polka is fun that's what everybody talk about in recent years for Weird Al and I watched it once on stream and my stream got muted so sadly I can't really sing or talk I, and I've never seen Hamilton the original so I don't I don't appreciate it as much as people who probably really love Hamilton. But it is really good. Lady Gog is close to meeting your criteria. He did perform this way in Poker Face, which is a direct parody of Poker Face, but it is a polka mix. Yeah. Yeah, you're right that Lady Gaga is close. Uh, for you, never heard of the R. Kelly trapped in a closet before. Heard the Weird Al trapped in the drive-thru. Same for me. Yeah, same for me. <laughs> uh... I said ketchup! They forgot the onions. I just, I remember clips from that song. And it's just... Do I have something in my teeth? Spinach? Broccoli? You almost got it? Alright, close enough. I, it's just it's such a stupid song of him. Uh, the original is apparently a really stupid song too, so apparently that's the reason it's... Weird Al's version is so ridiculous. Because basically the original was about as ridiculous. And it's even more ridiculous now that there's all this crazy stuff with R. Kelly and peeing on people or whatever he's now famous for. Yeah, Tawny Harding and Nancy Kerrigan, that's what it was. That was the, um... Ah, the <laughs> parody thing. Uh, let's see, you appreciate how ripped that Daniel Radcliffe got to play Weird Al in the Weird Al movie? It made it even funnier. Did he really get ripped for that role? I feel like he was already kind of... Like, he's one of those actors that probably has a trainer that seems like he's always in pretty good shape. That would be funny if he did, because Weird Al isn't ripped, but makes it, you know, funnier if he did that because reasons. MacArthur Park is about as ridiculous as Jurassic Park. The line is literally, someone left the cake out in the rain. I don't think that I can take it because it took so long to bake it and I'll never have the recipe again. Oh no. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Uh, second shield is 105. I want to save enough for backup battery. That's my main goal, backup battery. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe might have already been ripped. I think he already was. Like, I think Daniel Radcliffe is underrated ripped celebrity. Because I... I remember fairly... I remember when watching um, one of the Harry Potter movies and he's just in the, a bathtub with his shirt off. I'm like, why are we seeing a very ripped Daniel Radcliffe in Harry Potter? And why is Harry Potter so ripped? <laughs> like, I feel like I remember seeing and thinking that in one of the Harry Potter movies. A lot of fuel, actually. Yeah, I'll take that for the fuel. Like, what was the one where they ride dragons around? Is it the Goblet of Fire? I feel like it might have been that one. Uh, a plane was about to take off when a man burst out of the cockpit naked, yelling over the tannoy. I don't know what a tannoy is. This is your captain streaking. Okay, well done, well done. Uh, do we have any stores up here? Chip question. If you hover over a jump point, does the extra fuel consumption show up? Uh, hopefully you just got answered that because I just did it, Fred. And yes, it showed that it was going to take two. Hopefully you noticed that. I love when they hit my cloaking while I'm cloaked. When I have a 75% chance of dodge, it's my favorite. That's fine. I think of the four months of Prime Subbage, Crippled Commander. How's it hanging? It's 
going going well. Hanging something. Uh, hanging well. I don't know. Such a weird way of asking how somebody's doing. How's it hanging? Wonder what that came from. <clears throat> All right, no store up here. We're skipping jump. See right there. You can see right here. One, two. Takes two for that. Could go there and then use extra fuel to go there, but. Nah. The answer is always low and to the left. I know. Well, if you're going to make a high school teenage boy joke, there is a, um, I think, a comedian who said, My answer is small, shriveled, and to the left. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Cool, gross joke, bro. Cool body humor. Wow. Wow, I keep getting hit while cloaked. I do not like that. Okay, that should destroy all this stuff. You're gonna Google where that came from. Hey, real rock beat with three gifted subs out of nowhere. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, do I care about a crew kill here? Eh, not really. And Fred with two gifted subs. All right, get a little bit of a hype train going. Randomly. Random hype trains, best type of hype trains. Subscribing, you know, no. Thanks for subscribing to the channel, you know, no. uh, What am I trying to do? Buy a backup battery? Can't do that since backup battery is 60 unless I do if I do the shield upgrade. So let's go ahead and do just regular power for a bit. Probably have done could have probably done the hacking two upgrade and still had enough for backup battery. This ship looks really cool. I love my favorite part about this ship is the really, really cool visuals. This is just very pretty. Just very pretty. Hope the bomb will be the plan here. Stun bomb, okay. To the clone base. There's probably a crew kill here. If I turn off my artillery. That is helping. Google says the origin of how's it hanging is exactly what you think it is. It's a the male genitalia joke. <laughs> okay. For some reason. Alright. My weapons are already fully trained, so that's good. All right, and there you go. Glad to find out. Not really that glad. This poor NG. Poor every ship that we fight with this Ripper. This Ripper is, I think is evil. Whole breach beam. The look of this weapon is really cool, too. I haven't looked at the charging of it. Anything special just kind of lights up, I guess. Yeah, kind of a normal... The light lighting up, slowly glowing a little bit brighter. Very cool. Very cool. Um, hack 2. I can still afford the 60 scrap. Whatchamacallit. Uh, backup battery. Definitely crew kill this. Oops. 
Well, here's the counter to our breaching beam, though. Slug repair gel. I don't think it'll counter it hard enough, though. This is an evil beam, man. So evil. He dodged me. All right. Um, jump here to see all all our jumps. See if there's a store. I feel like I have I seen a store in this Manta sector. I can't remember. If I don't see a store, I'll get second shield, I guess. All right, there we go. Well, thank you for the mini hype train, uh, Fred and Real Rock B. Appreciate you, you folks. That is super, super nice. There's a backup battery. All right, last system. Um, I would replace chain laser with a better two, a better shield busting weapon, but there's not one there. This I would keep if I had four weapons slots, but I don't have that. So, backup battery. Could my clone bay to do Johnny Elite Spiders and stuff, but I have the mind control counter. I don't think I want to do that. Is there an NG for sale here? No, all right, let's just get our second shield here. Oh, if I sell this, can I get second shield? I'm gonna sell this to get second shield, yes. All right, we have level two cloaking, I mean level two hacking, cloaking, insane weapons, all of the systems. Feels good, feels good. It's weird to see that kind of damage on their ship without them losing HP, I know, right? Man. But as I say, if I get clone back and do giant alien spiders, we see giant alien spiders for the second time. Unlucky game. Unlucky. Alright. Okay, free defense drone. Um, do I care about stores? All I basically want to do would be replace chain laser with a better shield busting weapon, so... I care about... Uh, I guess we'll just go NG, because I don't want to mess with Zoltans. Only Carl's around here knows Steve's, that's right. I have so many drone parts. A very strong ship. I like it. Oh, you know, we haven't talked about the latest video game drama. So, oh wow, backup battery came at level two. No wonder it was more expensive. So, has anybody been hearing all the hoopla that's really stupid and ridiculous, as is most hoopla about video game stuff? About Dragon's Dogma. Apparently everybody's up in arms over this stupid monetization when the monetization is actually just really stupid. <laughs> There's like all these videos about on YouTube about Oh damn it, solar flare in my hacked sensors that I can't put the fire out. About people being outraged and them steam negative viewing them over the uh, monetization. But it's so stupid because all the stuff that they're selling on the Dragon's Dogma monetization is worthless crap that you can just get in the game anyway. And it's the same stupid stuff that Capcom always does, so it doesn't make sense that everybody's outraged about it. You heard about it, but you didn't play the game. No one's actually up in arms about it, just their PR money doing their thing. You think so? I mean... The game is like, it's got the negative review bombing on Steam. Would Capcom really do that to themselves? I feel like they wouldn't do that to themselves. Is Burst 2 a better purchase than Heavy 1? Nahaku, you're gonna hate this, but I'm gonna tell you the same thing that I tell everybody when they ask questions like that. It depends. What's your build? How many weapon slots do you have? In general, Burst Laser 2 is better, but it's also more expensive. If you only have three weapon slots, you probably don't want to buy Heavy Laser 1. Heavy Laser 1 easier to upgrade into because it's cheaper. Like, it depends. A Dragon's Dogma 2 micro thing is real stupid. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remaster had the exact same thing and no one said anything. 
One game gets the highest praise possible because of nostalgia. Another one has much lesser following and it gets shit on. Yeah, I feel like it's just... I, I watched a number of... Uh, like, one of the guys who did a review about it, who didn't mention it, apparently got a bunch of negative comments because he didn't mention it because he thought it was stupid and he forgot about it. And then he's re released another video to defend his position of not caring about it. <laughs> it's just... it's. It's so funny to me what... I love this drama because it means nothing and it doesn't matter. And it cracks me up that people will get up in arms over... Microtransactions in Dragon's Dogma that are literally for stuff that don't matter. But people will negative Steam review bomb because of it. It's just... it's. I love that kind of drama because it's so dull. Uh, it cracks me up, that kind of drama. I should buy all the fuel because taking these extra jumps. Bought an NG because we're rich and I want an NG. Heard a few complaints about the PC version having performance issues as well. Yeah, that's the that's the like actual legitimate negative negative review is from what I've heard is that there's been some PC performance issues. I feel like every PC game launch over the past several years have been having that same issue, yeah. Capcom is a bit of a stupid company despite releasing some classics, yeah. Um, goodness. This ship is strong as hell. Okay. I'm gonna hack something. I'm gonna hack your shields and then cloak as we do some work here. This guy's really effing strong. Freaking disruptors are just dumb, man. Very nice. It almost feels like complaining about, I don't know, Blizzard's pricing or EA's loot boxes. Like, complaining about it now when they've been doing it for frickin' 20 years? Just pretending now you're outraged? Like, now? Now you're outraged? Really? They've been doing it for 20 years. Are you going to pretend like you haven't noticed it for the last 20 years? We all think it's stupid, but why are you pretending that only now is it a big deal? Are they letting you pay for unlocks instead of earning them? No. What's dumb about it, Scott, if you watch... I've watched a couple of videos about it. The things that you can buy from their cash stop are like... Cash shop are like one or two dollar things that you can buy with in-game currency that you just get from playing the game. From what I saw, there's only two things that you can buy with real money that you can't get in-game. One of them is kind of goofy and is is like a, like a Dragon's Dogma 1 music sound pack. That would actually be kind of cool if you get it in-game, but you can buy that with real money. And the other one is like like a camp a camp a, uh, a campsite thing that is slightly lower weight or something like that. Everything else is dumb stuff that you can buy in game and the versions of it that you can buy for real money are actually the worst versions like uh, being able to change your followers type or something. It's, it's really dumb. It's like really dumb monetization that doesn't even affect gameplay. So it's just it's so ridiculous. Which is why I like it so much because it's so funny to me. That people are up in arms over something that is just so goofy and stupid. <laughs> I know, waste. Uh, true, we do have a silly device. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. If so, who cares if you can lock, all knock them for free? Well, and that's the thing. It's it's what's, what's so goofy about people being so uh, up in arms and outraged and negative. Um, thank you for the Prime sub. Uh, I think that H HDD, yeah up in arms over it is because it's it's something so ridiculous that makes no sense that people are outraged about. Capcom 100% would put stupid microtransactions in because they want more money. It's not the first time. Yeah, yeah. NG blue option. Nice. What happened at Blizzard? You missed everything. Um. Well, I'm just talking about... Just check the VOD. <laughs> Blizzard is known for... Stupid stuff, like having a hundred dollar elite version of Diablo 4 so you can play it a day early. 
or having a battle pass for a full price game that gives you something that all it lets you do is skip a little bit. Like just stupidly overpriced convenience stuff. Blizzard is known for that. So complaining about it now is like complaining that the sky is blue or bald man yells at cloud or me getting mad at missiles. I mean, it's stupid. I know it's going to happen. I shouldn't still get mad, but it still happens. I don't know what MTA is. Uh, selling barely improved versions of items for real money is the most R JRPG thing you can think of because you're basically calling your own fan base out for wanting to min-max every little number. Sounds legit. Uh, clone bay, shield charge booster, drone recovery arm is interesting if I didn't have 27 drone parts. So... Gonna be my last augment slot. I wonder if shield charge booster is worth it with how uh, these shields are purposely overpriced for the upgrade cost. Hmm. Keep hoping to find like a black one in the store. Yeah, I don't care about any of that. I have a computer making sounds like I unplugged a USB when I did not plug in, unplug or plug in a USB. Uh, do I actually get two jumps here? I think I do. I'm gonna jump behind the exit, then go to the exit. Waste fuel, but gain extra scrap potentially. But I, I, I like I eat up that kind of drama, that kind of. It's like what some people love about, you know, Hollywood. Um, the drama about, I don't know, uh, what keeping up with the Kardashians happened last episode that I couldn't give a crap about. But I, I love this video game drama, man. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I eat that up. I think it's so fun to watch. YouTubers make videos and commentary about it. It's just... That is entertainment to me. People up in arms over things that don't matter. And I love I love watching videos about that goofy stuff. If that would have happened 20 years ago, would the follow be different? I don't think it would have happened 20 years ago because microtransactions didn't exist 20 years ago at Red Arc Light. Like, 20 years ago, you couldn't buy a full-price game and get DLC for it, let alone spend $5 for a, a level skip. Like, the gaming landscape is unrecognizable from what it was 20 years ago. When you couldn't buy every game on Steam and you had to go to GameStop to buy a CD to put in your... In your you know, Wii or Xbox or whatever to play a game. Like, it just doesn't even feel like it's a comparable... It's like comparing Model Ts versus Ferraris. Like, if you compare them, it makes no sense to compare them. There's our flak one I've been looking for. You no, know, maybe I should have got the drone recovery arm just so I could use fast shield every single jump. Oh well. What's up, Armed Condor? You finally got a chance to catch one of your streams. How's streak going? Uh, it got reset the other day. Um, I mean, you ask, so spoiler. Someone introduced them 20 years ago. You would have been easy to sell mounts for money and WoW, for example. I, I think that's just wrong, Red Arc. Like, if somebody introduced them 20 years ago, people, I think, would have been outraged then. Now it's just kind of fake outrage. Because we all know that they exist. It's just how modern-day monetization gaming is. Why did the whole Skyrim horse armor thing happen? Because many gamers attribute that controversy to the mo modern day birth mindshare transaction thing, huh? I don't know when that was. <laughs> or was it Oblivion? You don't remember. What are the stats of the Ripper? It does... Uh, check the VOD. Uh, somebody in chat, can somebody in chat tell them what the stats are for that? I looked at it earlier and I'm, you know, in the middle of a fight, so I can't really. 
two system damage and 80 or 50% breach chance, something like that. No hull damage, just, just system damage. And does two system damage. It's stupidly strong. <coughs> Earliest DLC you remember was Elder Scrolls Oblivion Horse Armor. Okay, so apparently that was a thing. Should have uh, locked those guys out. Uh, pay to win can go F itself. Just put my 50 cents into that topic. Cool. We should have been hitting shields. Uh, this is probably a crew kill, isn't it? If I do it right. It was 2006 that that happened. There you go. The birth of microtransactions, I guess. 2006. How the hell do they keep preparing this in time? I guess the... I didn't get an actual breach. There we go. Uh, we just got desensitized to it somehow. I mean... I don't know. I feel like there's two sides of it. Like, prices of games haven't gone up that much in 20 years. So, but the cost of making games has gone up astronomically. So I don't, I don't even begrudge a lot of the microtransactions. I agree that pay to win sucks. And if you're paying full price for a game, like 70 bucks, you shouldn't immediately have one, two, three, four, five dollar microtransactions. I think that's just greedy. But I also understand that game developers need to make money if they're going to keep making games that keep costing more and more money to develop. Especially if game pricing doesn't go up. So I feel like a lot of a lot of people who whine about microtransactions don't take into consideration a lot of these things. That games, AAA games still cost 60 to $70, which is what they cost 30 years ago, and the price hasn't gone up. In that entire time. I think that's a pretty important bit of information that's left out a lot when people complain about this kind of stuff. People would definitely have been outraged 20 years ago, yeah. Um, piracy was everywhere back in the day, like the majority of your Amiga Spectrum games weren't pirated. Were. You can't type. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna accept that bribe because I don't want to deal with cloaking and missiles because it's annoying. Price of producing the game's gone up. How? With so many new tools, I actually make it easier and require less crew to pull off. Um, well, I'm not a game developer. I am I say it costs more because people on the internet have said it costs more. I would say it costs more because inflation exists. Saying that the tools are better doesn't mean that the tools aren't more expensive. Um... Um, the amount of money you have to pay a developer now versus 30 years ago, I'm sure has got to be ridiculously more expensive. What is the average salary of a game developer today versus 30 years ago? I don't know, but I'm guessing it's a lot higher because inflation exists. Um, if you want to have computers for our developers to work for, to rent out workspace for your studio to be like all these things are freaking way more expensive than they were 30 years ago and i feel like if you're not acknowledging that you're being very disingenuous um if your tools get bigger your scope also gets bigger you also think quite some triple a bug fest games aren't worth their money game prices also don't sit in one place yeah but if we're talking about triple a games which is what i said madman those still cost 60, 70, 80 bucks, the same price they cost 30 years ago. If you deny that, you're just being disingenuous or lying. It's just it's just true. It's just objectively true that the prices have not changed that much for AAA games, and that's what I'm talking about. Developer salary has become very expensive. I'm sure it has. The flip side of that is that the cost of distribution and the number of sales games has also gone up gone up dramatically, which is increased pure profit. That That is the side of it that I would accept, is that it's if most people are buying digitally, it's probably way cheaper to distribute. That is definitely not something you can argue, either. 
Does that equal all the other higher price things that are costing things I'm talking about? I don't know. I'm not a game developer. But I have a feeling when people on the internet, especially Reddit, say, it's easier to make games, it's cheaper because of tools and shit. They're ignoring all the other parts that are in it. Like, people on the internet love to ignore things that don't... What is it? Cognitive bias? That don't... Um, agree with their idea of what truth is. You ignore the stuff that doesn't agree with your opinion, whatever that thing is. You think like it's a justification for leeching money using microtransactions? Again, I don't like microtransactions. I feel like they suck, but I understand why they exist. And a lot of the people who who will have a hard line on they're bad at all times, every time, because they're misused by certain companies is kind of ignoring a lot of things going on in the video game industry. Um, let's get third shield. Can I afford it? I can. Uh, difference between selling one or one billion copies is pennies of difference. Confirmation bias only recognizes evidence that supports your position. Cost of employees and infrastructure have definitely gone up dramatically in the last several decades. In the 90s, a AAA game cost 40 to $45. What? Is that true? I specifically remember spending 60 or 70 bucks on Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy... I don't know. Is that really true, Factoid? Are you using evidence-based looking up on that? Because I feel like I remember there being $70 back then. You spent 80 for Final Fantasy 3 in like 64 and 94? Yeah. Maybe, maybe the pricing was less uniform than I'm remembering. Or maybe the only games I wanted were the games that cost $60. I don't know. You remember paying 60 bucks for Jack and Ratchet and Clank? There was a bigger spread in game prices in the 90s. The average game was 40 to 45. Wow, I don't remember that at all. I must have never played any $45 games because I don't remember asking my parents for a game that cost $45 ever in the 90s. Just don't remember that. But again, maybe I have cognitive bias that I'm forgetting the cheaper games. I, I remember buying Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games that were 60 and $70. Like, I remember almost every game I bought, I feel like, was 60 or 70 bucks. You bought Secret of Evermore for 60 bucks 25 years ago? Depends on the system. Yeah, I had a Nintendo. I didn't have PlayStation, so maybe that's why I remember... Maybe Nintendo was always those prices, and that's what I'm comparing to. Um, but still, even if the most expensive games were 70, and the average was 40 to 45, today the most expensive games are like 80, right? In order to spend 90 or or $100 on the game, you're buying the Deluxe Edition, right? Or some other crap. I just... I think ignoring inflation is disingenuous when talking about the monetization of a lot of modern day video game stuff. And again, I hate microtransactions, I think they shouldn't exist, but I understand why they do, and ignoring other things is just, the word is just disingenuous, that's just the word. You can't remember the price of big box PC games or maybe cheaper than S SNES. I don't know. Um, like, how much did I pay for Warcraft 3 back in the day? Or Diablo 2? I feel like those games were still, like, the AAA games of the day that were probably at least 50. If you looked it up, Warcraft 3 was 60. That sounds, that sounds right to me. And if we go on Steam and look up Baldur's Gate 3 right now, how much does that cost? It's probably 60, right? 
And Warcraft 3 was in, what, 96? And this is 2024? I mean... Inflation's real, my friends. Just ask my rent prices. And your food prices. Top Command and Conquer was like 35 to 40. Warcraft 3 was a 2002 release. Okay. I wonder what Diablo 2 was when it first came out. Alright, store 107 scrap. Do I have anything to sell? Not really. Do I even care about going to a store then? I don't know if I'm ever going to use this fast shield charger. Am I? If I have enough power, I guess maybe I'd turn it on. But this ship, with all the systems, feels like it's going to be very hard to power everything. Let's skip the store. I mean, what if burst laser 2 instead of heavy laser 1? I, I guess I'll check it. Grand Conqueror was definitely about $35. I remember buying it at EB Games in the mall. That's cheap. If Command and Conquer was ch that cheap back then, that was a good deal. I guess my question would, would be, was, was Command and Conquer a AAA game back then? I don't know. Maybe it was. I feel like, like just the size of the gaming market is so much different now. It's Hard to say what was a triple A game back then compared to what a triple A game is today, right? Yeah, and was that at launch? I don't I don't know. Again, it's one of those things where people can say what they remember, but like we'd have to look at some hard facts and look at pricing and stuff. And when I watch videos on YouTube where I think they are doing these things where they look up pricing and stuff. There's a lot of, I don't know, rose tinted goggles or something. Oh, that's not the right word. I don't know. Uh, where you were, Warcraft 3 costs a lot lower than 60. You can't say it's fair because back then it was true Pirates Bay. Also dollar costs like three times less than it does now too. Is lots less than 60 where you were? Okay. Again, for me, conversations like this are hard because this is a lot of, like, anecdotal. I remember it being this way. Or this region, it was this way. So I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what's true and what's people remembering and people... Um... Again, using using things that either don't or do support their position with their their memory stuff. 80s and early 90s, PC gaming wasn't as significant compared to consoles. That's true. So it makes sense if a lot of the computer games were a lot cheaper. So can you even call those $30 PC games AAA? I would argue that you might not be able to even call those games AAA. Uh, let's put you on censored, I guess. Because console gaming was big, PC gaming was not as big of a thing. Your games are free because your mom bought them. Your mom didn't think they were free. I wish there were a definitive objective set of resources to look up prices at release. Yeah, that would move this conversation to something a lot more logical and rational. But then we wouldn't be on the internet where illogical, emotion, and <laughs> uh, self-righteous views are what all good discussions are backed up by all discussions should be emotionally charged with no facts based evidence to support your positions sale prices are also high much higher overall as well as so they haven't needed to make things as expensive there's much more competition keeping prices lower that's true that's true the competition keeping the prices low is probably if there weren't so many gaming companies trying to get you to buy their games, there probably wouldn't be a max of like $70 for most AAA games. 
Still, the term AAA and its derivatives are very new vocabulary terms, huh? Inflation calculator is saying if you bought Warcraft 3 for $60 in 2002, that would be $103.50 today. All right. Uh, turn on the drone here, and let's hack your weapons just with a double whammy. Facts are for chumps, yeah. Only chumps use real facts-based anything. My flak is really slow. It's at the back of the ship. That's why I need this to be in the front. Just realized the flak artillery looks like a weirdly shaped flak with backwards something. The backwards plunger. AAA didn't even really appear as a term until later in the 90s. Legit didn't see, legit didn't see widespread use of the term AAA until the early 2010s. Facts for chumps. You don't want, you don't have any memory problems. Okay. Um, I don't care about Firebomb, but that's a good scrap deal, so I'll take it. The answer to have games gotten cheaper and more expensive over time is it depends. <laughs> there you go. The answer is it depends. That is the true answer. Just like all the answers we hate about FTL questions in this chat. Rand, should I buy this or this? It depends. There's the real world history VOD to check. Or where is the real world history VOD? Yeah, good question. I don't know. Uh, this guy has four shields in Sector 6, doesn't he? Alright, I'll hack shields. He just hit me at 89% chance to dodge. Cool. Thanks, game. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. I will say the the bad part about having any ship that starts with cloaking is it's really hard to get dodge training. Because you're just cloaking everything. Uh, there are designers that love their product. I heard from my girlfriend that Starved Dew Valley just did a massive free patch update. Said it was for helping mods, but was a lot of new content at no extra cost. Those are like the few and far between devs that you gotta appreciate in the modern day. Um, one of the other random videos I watched over the weekend was an interview with the lead developer or owner or whoever the name main guy is at Larian Studios talking about like their plans for after Baldur's Gate 3 where they're not doing any more Baldur's Gate stuff because probably Wizard of the Coast isn't hiring them again or whatever um, and what he, on the horizon he's looking forward to do and talking about how difficult it is to make games how they ran out of money all the time like when you hear developers of even the biggest successful games like Baldur's Gate 3 talk about developing a lot of times they're talking about running out of money understanding the market, having a hard time finding good people to uh, work for them. Like, it's game development. People on the internet who don't make games have no idea how hard it is to make games, I'm sure. I'm sure that's true about basically everything. But, like, people on the internet love to complain about video games, have no idea how hard and how much work it must take for the things we love to happen. Uh, you love Terraria because it's gotten like seven final updates still going. Larian had to actually pay their voice actors. <laughs> True, compared to, I guess you're making a joke about the WoW AI voice actors. The other AAA devs use janitorial staff for that. <laughs> okay. that's, that's your joke, okay. You code something and somehow it'll break something that has nothing to do with that source. Yeah. I would not want to be a video game developer. 
any kind of computer development. It all sounds very hard and detail-oriented, which is not what I'm good at, but... We people on the internet sure do like to complain about that stuff, though. We found the VOD for all of history. Be right back. Going to check if there was a second gunman on the grassy knoll. Cool. Boarded over here. Over here. You could not let them do damage to us. That'd be great. Uh, I'm trying not to hack here. Uh, today's overpriced AAA projects play like garbage hell. Might sound even worse than WoW fairly often. I don't know, man. Man, you... Your negative statements about all AAA games make me have a hard time believing any of your statements about AAA games. Because that kind of over overgeneralization is the stuff that makes me not want to take your opinion seriously. Like, it's just a lot of overgeneralizations that people say on the internet are the things that make me go, I don't think I want to trust what this person says. Because that doesn't sound like an, a, a biased, an unbiased, objective statement, you know? You didn't say all. You said today's overpriced AF AAA projects play like garbage. That is a very generalized statement. You said today's overpriced AF AAA projects play like garbage. That is a very generalized statement about AAA games. So I have a hard time taking statements, blanket statements like that seriously. Just going to say. Um, I do have my control counter, so I don't need a slug pilot. Do I want to buy a slug pilot, though? I'm in the slug sectors. I kind of do. Doesn't have pilot training. Uh, I'll buy him for blue options, though. There are a lot of terror bad launches in some of their defense. Using Cyberpunk example, they put a lot of effort into fixing what was wrong at launch. Uh, it's not equal to all eight. AAA is garbage, ran, but you're of course free to disregard it since it's just my personal opinion. <laughs> okay. I didn't say I disregarded your opinion. I say I have a hard time taking a lot of your statements seriously when you use blanket statements as often as you like to do. And I know you didn't say all, but I just quoted what you did say, and to me, that doesn't sound like an unbiased opinion about AAA games. Now, I, I will say in general, I agree with a lot of those things, garbage AAA games that are not worth the price. But saying it as blanket statement as that is it that turns me off. That's like the the political environment in the US where people will say something about Republicans or about liberals. They want this. And when I hear statements like that I'm like oh, this is why I don't follow politics cuz kind of blanket statement makes people faceless and doesn't take into nuance of a lot of stuff. Now, I am guilty of a lot of this as other people, though, like, because I will say stuff like, like, I don't like Diablo 4, so I, any video that's talking negatively about Diablo 4, I will pretty much believe all of it, because I don't have much faith in a lot of what Blizzard does nowadays. And so if I watch a video where people are saying this is bad in Diablo 4, I'll pretty much believe it, even if I haven't played it in Diablo 4. Being a patient gamer these days is great. You get to experience a better version of the game with two, three years of content and bug fixes, even at a decent discount. Yeah. We can all hate Starfield, though. Even that. Uh, Ramsey's in chat. I don't know if Ramsey's here today. Ramsey's actually enjoys Starfield, so. Wait, no. Star Citizen. I always get Star Citizen and Starfield mixed up. One of those two, Ramsey's actually likes. We can make blanket statements about triple or quadruple A games. You think there's only one of those, right? You can definitely do that. 
It is a fairly bi biased opinion about AAA. I won't ever deny it. I am salty as hell about them pushing up shit for insane prices, and there were so many overhyped, overpriced, spectacularly failed projects. In my eyes, it's now majorly a a AAA is bad. Yeah, and, and I know you feel that way. And that's why I, no offense, take a lot of your statements about AAA games with a grain of salt. Because I just, I know it's coming from a very, I've been burned too many times place. So. Um, let's see, I could crew kill these guy, this guy. Do I want to? Sure. Sure, why not? Uh, I need to turn off artillery if I want to do that, though. Skull and Bone, yeah, that's that quadruple A game. Um, <laughs> whatever that even means. <laughs> I've watched many videos. Asmund Gold. The re part of the reason I talk about this stuff on these viewership days is because a lot of times the ships are so strong I don't have to focus too hard on playing the game. But like a lot of the videos I'm watching on YouTube are like Asmund Gold's take on X and somebody's response to Asmund Gold or Asmund Gold's response to X's take on X. And so like Skull and Bones was made some statement about it being the first quadruple A game and I don't even know what that means. Go play Helldivers 2. It's a good game. I actually watched it a little bit last night. It looks good. I, I'm probably not going to play it. Not because I don't want... Not because I don't think it's good, but because... It looks like a game that probably my audience wouldn't get super into. And also that has a lot of clicking, spamming to shoot things. Because it's a first-person or third-person shooter. And spammy things are going to kill my hands. So I don't think I could do that. You'd argue that there's a lot of credibility when complaining about AAA games at launch. You would argue that AAA games that you're after launch is a very reasonable area to, area, uh, area to join them. What even is Quadruple A? I don't know. Look up Quadruple A Skull and Bones game. The developer said it's one of the first of those. And I have a feeling what he meant by that was how expensive it was to make. But it doesn't look like it's so much better than any other game that it warrants a new whatever quadruple A would even mean. You run CP2077, I don't know what that means. On max path racing, your GPU will burn alive. Okay, I don't know what that means. Is that something to do with Helldivers 2, I guess, is what that is? I really like this purple shield. I haven't mentioned the shield too much. I noticed it when we first got the Dalton shield. Or the uh, fast shield drone was doing stuff, but that looks really good. Um, I actually want him to repair Ion, because then I can maybe get a little training here. My dodge training is looking close to being done. Repair the Ion up, then we might control you. Skull Moans has been in development hell since 2013. It's been called a quadruple A game by U Ubisoft. There we go. Talking about Cyberpunk. Okay. Cyberpunk 27-7. Path racing, ray tracing, trying to recreate light. Okay. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. I guess Cyberpunk can... Are you talking about a is this in reference to bad I think this might be in reference to bad triple A game releasing it must be what you're talking about and I'm not arguing that triple A don't deserve a lot of the negativity they've gotten but I feel like some of the vitriol about all triple A games are bad is just again remembering the stuff that backs up your opinion and we're getting a lot of the good AAA games. Because they do exist, as much as some people don't want to admit. There are good AAA games out there. Um, 
question in chat from indie games. Does anyone know games like Ori and the Blind Forest? Games that aren't Hollow Knight or Celeste. You're missing that sense of exploring and beautiful places and platforming. Civilian Sector 6 or 7. Nice. Uh, I don't know. Maybe some people on YouTube can respond to it in the comments too. You're playing Power Fantasy the other day. Free, made by one dude. Really addictive. Don't play it. <laughs> you think good... Triple-A games are in a minority. That's one of those that, to me, feels like it de depends. Because what even is a good Triple-A game? What equals good is so subjective. I don't know. I just... As a person who doesn't play a lot of AAA games, I don't even know if I can confidently state anything that would support or refute that. I feel like I feel like you'd have to ask people like Co Carnage if that's true. The people who play literally every game that comes out, or Dan's Gaming. Do the people who play literally every AAA game that comes out think that AAA games are bad in general? Do they think that? And I don't know. I honestly don't know if they think that. Okay, this should be the crew kill. Nice. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's like super objective. Uh, you're fairly sure a lot of those super streamers will say that all AAA games are good? I don't know if they would. They probably wouldn't make such a blanket generalized statement, honestly. They would probably say what I say about FTL, which is it depends. Some are good, some are bad. That's what I think they'd say. Because they're sponsored by their bread and butter? I don't know. That's another one of those things that people say about streamers and YouTube all the time. YouTubers all the time. They're sponsored. Of course they're going to say it's good. I mean, there are a lot of streamers and YouTubers out there who are very negative about their reviews. If it's bad, they'll say it. Uh, that one, that one again, it sounds like a very generalized statement. They'll play it because it's sponsored, but most, a lot of them will play and then say they're... They will say, this is good, this is bad, I don't like this, they should fix this. I mean, most streamers and YouTubers who are worth their salt that review stuff, if they're not honest, gamers are going to call them out on it. Maybe there are people out there who will just say everything's good about every game that they get paid to review, but I don't watch any of those because I think that's worthless. It's, it doesn't make games better, and it's not, it's not something I want to support so if they're out there doing it I don't support those and I feel like in this environment they would they would get called out on being a shill pretty pretty quick and heavily and hardcore even without being sponsored they're making money play it so it feels better than normal guy who just spends $60 for a dung heap well true I mean if a streamer plays a crappy game uh, that they were given for free and are getting subs while playing it. What do they care if it's good or bad, you know? But what I will say is most people who are gaming for a living, I don't, I mean, maybe some of them are, but I don't think a lot of them are in, for, in it for the money. At least all the ones that I watch are in it because they love games and want to play good games. Yes, I know, I'm such a sellout. I'm so definitely sponsored by Subset. I have received so many zero dollars and zero cents from them to be so rich. Like, the streamers and YouTubers I watch, I watch because they're... I can tell they're a nerdy gamer like me, and they're going to think the same things or similar have similar reactions to things. Like, watch... Um, Force Gaming's review about Dog Dragon's Dogma 2 that I watched the other day.
Uh, he talked about the things he liked and a lot of the things he did not like about Dragon's Dogma 2. And it made me go, eh, I might not be into Dragon's Dogma 2, honestly. I never played the first one, and... It looks a little on rails, even though it's supposed to be open world. I kind of understand it having mixed reviews, even without all the uh, negative review bombing uh, because of the microtransaction stuff. Dragon's Dogma might not actually be for me because the combat looks like not my cup of tea and the exploration doesn't look as good as I would want it to be. And also, it's like 60 bucks, so, you know, talking about overpriced games. Perfect example of a AAA game that might be overpriced for the amount of time you get out of it, you know? The ship is pure carnage? Yeah, the uh, the Ripper beam drone is pretty insane. It's pretty insane. Exploration is great in Dragon's Dogma. You love it? From what I saw, it didn't, it looked like, like there's always something to do in the world, but it's not actually that wide open. Like there's a lot of walls that you're forced to walk through, canyons that are, this is where you have to go, which to me doesn't sound like exploration, it feels like it's a little on rails, but if it's jam-packed with content, maybe it doesn't feel that way. And since I haven't played it, I don't know how it feels. But just when I was watching the review and looking at the maps and seeing the areas they explored, it didn't look really open world. It looked like staged open world, if that makes sense. But again, I haven't played it, so that's just what I saw from reviews. Um... If you don't like walking almost everywhere, you won't like exploration in Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, I have read about that, or seen that in a bunch of reviews where the... Uh, there's basically no fast travel, or very limited fast travel. But again, I'm not trying to knock Dragon's Dogma 2. That's just the current big thing that's out that I've watched a lot of videos for, so... I'm sure there's a lot of people that really love it. A lot of people, a lot of the reviews I've seen said they, they enjoy the combat like immensely. I'm just not sure. I don't like, I'm not always the biggest fan of action RPG combat and Dragon's Dogma has some interesting class things where only certain classes can either block or dodge. So it looks a little weird with the um, the way you avoid damage in that game. But again, I probably need to play it. But again, I, I need to play like six games still, so. Or 20 or more. Uh, you feel like fast travel makes world feel less real anyway. You kind of like that, honestly. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not even saying that the fast travel would be bad. I might enjoy it because I've been playing WoW Classic. And half the game is getting on a flight path and sitting there for five minutes. So, I don't love it, but it does make the world feel more interesting and worthwhile to explore if you're not just, you know, doing New World and fast traveling to every city to get quests done or something. I definitely don't like too much fast travel. That, that, that makes a world feel tiny and not real. Oh, there's a lot of... Oh. There is really high level drone control we could get. I don't know that I'm going to. Yeah, I never played Dragon's Dogma 1 either. People need to learn to detach their personalities from the games they like. Maybe then you wouldn't need to give such disclaimers. Yeah, I guess that's true. People will defend what they love to the death. And if somebody dis disagrees with their opinion, then they hate that person. Or think that everything they've ever said ever is wrong and they can never agree with anything it's like I feel like I don't know if it's always been this way or I'm just noticing it now that I'm more of an adult but it feels like every viewpoint is polarizing 
like, not just on the internet, but like, if you have one religious, political, gaming, social view, and it doesn't perfectly line up with somebody else's, uh, well, can't be friends. Can't be friends, we can't hang out. I don't like you. <laughs> I think that's the result of social media. You're probably right. It's probably because social media is blown up and everybody can see everybody else's opinion. So everybody can always agree or disagree as hardcore as possible with every opinion they see. It's probably one of the big negatives about social media. So if I go here, three, four, five, six. We want to dive. Let's see. Let's get maxed out artillery. Let's do that. See, chat, look how much I love artillery when it's a flak one. Uh, let's see. Dragon's Dogma 1 is a wee janky. From what I hear, Dragon's Dogma 2 has a lot of that same jankiness, which is another reason why I'm not sure if I would actually enjoy it as much as people who are used to and appreciate the jankiness of Dragon's Dogma 1. The racing fan game, old school Gran Turismo versus Forza fanboy wars were insanely toxic. So maybe I'm just now noticing it more. It sounds like maybe it wasn't, it's not a new thing for people to be overly defensive and toxic about the things they love. I just didn't participate or notice it as much as back in the day or something. You notice your own bias, but it doesn't make it go away. I know. I know. Same for me. Same for me. I'm just trying... I'm trying to help us all be aware of it. Because, you know, I want to work on it for myself as well. Like, I think the girl that I might be trying to go on a date with is more conservative. And I think I'm more liberal. And I feel like a lot of people, if they saw that on a dating website, would... It, instantly say X, no, I can't interact with this person because they won't agree with me on things. But like, I feel like, I feel like that's something we should all try to be better at. Not canceling each other based on one difference. Of course, there are extremes to all this. But, you know... I'm trying to not have so much road rage or yell at FTL or be quite so negative all the time. It's hard for me because I am a 43-year-old grumpy old man now. People would literally claim victory for their preferred IP before the IP's next game was even released back then. <laughs> nice. That sounds like Nintendo versus Sega or PlayStation Wars back in the day. Uh, quests were not very well crafted in Dragon's Dogma 1. So far in Dragon's Dogma 2, it's been a lot smoother. Okay, well, that's good to hear. You learned with H over to just accept people disagreeing with you. Helps a lot in life to not fight to the death with anyone that doesn't share something. Yeah. Randus Aurelius. Yes. Like, I still... Like, one of my biggest things is... If I see anybody doing anything... Remotely what I consider bad in driving, I, like, instantly think they're a terrible driver. Like, if somebody does not, I say this all the time, if they don't turn yield, if somebody, um, uh, cuts you off or doesn't stop all the way at the stop sign, things that I probably do sometimes, but if I see it and it affects me, I instantly think you are a terrible driver. And that's hard to not do in Dallas, because there are a lot of people who are very mediocre or bad drivers, but they all look bad to me when I'm being cut off by them, you know? So, I have a hard time with that one. I have a hard time with that one. Uh, probably anybody who lives in a metropolitan area and has to drive a lot feels me on this. Okay, when people turn into a lane that they're not supposed to go that far into, if that makes sense. Yes, if somebody is in the left lane and there's an intersection within a half a block and they need to turn right, instead of taking the loss and getting over one lane going through and doing U-turn, they will cut off everybody by 
coming over three lanes. I've seen that probably two or three times in the last month. Where people will be in the wrong lane, and because they're dumbass... What I say, dumbass, or... It's probably more like they weren't thinking or were on the phone. Didn't plan for that. They have to cut off everyone behind them because of their dumbass. And that pisses me off. And it's dangerous. It is dangerous. But I shouldn't get as mad as I do. But I get really mad. I drop a lot of F-bombs while I'm driving when I see bullshit like that. And it happens all the time in Dallas. Like, literally all the time. Pretty much every time I go out to get breakfast or go work out, I will see at least one or two instances of somebody crossing lanes they shouldn't, uh, pulling out in front of other people when they should turn yield, when they should yield, because it's not their turn to go. It's like, I see, I see it all the time in Dallas, and it's so frustrating. Thank God you don't have the eyesight for a driving license. There you go. <laughs> Thank God for that. As an adult, one of the most important things you have learned is distinguish between things we disagree with that matter and things we disagree with that don't matter. It makes things easier. If they're supposed to stay in their own lane during the turn, but they go to the next one next to it. This is my exit. Good luck, everybody. I know, right? They'll just they'll just cross all the lanes, and I'm like, that's you should you should get a ticket, and you should not be allowed to drive for a while if you do stuff like that. I am I am a hardcore that if and if people do stupid stuff like that, they should not be allowed a driver's license for a while. Because you are putting driving has got to be the big one because you are actually putting people's lives in danger when you make stupid driving decisions like that. Because you are impatient or forgetful or whatever the excuse is for crossing four lanes when you shouldn't. You are actually putting people's lives in danger when you do crap like that. And I just... It pisses me off that people don't care. Like, it, it frustrates the hell out of me that people are like, oh, it's fine, they'll wait for me, they'll... I need to be over here, so I'm just gonna go. People need to give me space. It's so selfish and inconsiderate. And selfishness and inconsideration frustrate the hell out of me. You saw a guy swerving so bad in front of you on the way to the gym, he almost hit a cop and still didn't get pulled over. Yeah. You like the saying, a good max, a good driver mixes their exit sometimes. A bad driver never does. Oh, misses. Okay. Yes. Yes. If you are in the wrong lane, the correct response is not, uh-oh, I better go get over my lane come hell or high water. The thing is, oh, I hope I get over, and if I don't get over in time, well, I miss it, and I have to go to the next one. That's, that's what you should do, but people are impatient or inconsiderate or whatever they are, and it pisses me the hell off. It does. It just pisses me off so much. Uh. And I feel like it just got worse when I was an Uber driver. Like, if your job is to drive people around and what you're constantly fighting is other people seemingly intent on getting themselves or other people killed with their bad driving, it's, uh, it's a rough, it's a rough, it's a rough job. Uh, okay, there's a store. Do I care about a store? Uh, not really, I guess. Let's get weapon value. This, that value. Oh, I was gonna say I would really like more power, and we have a giant backup battery upgrade that I didn't even notice, so that's cool. It's upsetting to see someone display a total disregard for the social contract. Yeah, right? And it seems to happen most in driving. Probably more than anywhere else. It's got to be driving. It's got to be the place where that is most day-to-day um, -day encountered. It's like somebody skipping a line at a, you know, when you're trying to wait for your coffee. I don't drink coffee, but if I did and somebody was just skipping line or, you know... 
doing something that makes them show that they think they're more important than everybody else. Uh, that's that's what the whole Karen thing is about, right? People who talk about Karens. Did you have to hold in the F-bombs when I had passengers? <laughs> yeah, I did. Although I will say when I had passengers, I was like, all right, I'm getting paid to do this. And if I get them there any faster, I'm not going to make any more money. So I was able to be a little bit more chill. It was more like after my day of Uber and Lyft driving was over and I'm just trying to get home and crash. Not crash in the car, but, you know, crash in my chair and play video games. I would be pissed off at anybody cutting me off, slowing me down from getting home after a shitty day of... Uber driving, man, I just, I want to get home and crash, and if anybody's cutting me off or running red lights that make me miss a green light, you know, I was, I was, I was cursing those people out, that's for sure. Wow, these are really cheap. What's uh, Fifth Shield, huh? Those are pretty cheap for that. Uh, I might actually be able to get Fifth Shield after phase one of the boss, okay. Uh, when you were an old man driving pet peeves is accelerating loudly in your jacked up truck an entire 300 feet till you have to slam on your brakes at the next traffic light. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying as hell. I was gonna turn my drones on, but I guess I'm not gonna turn my drones on now. Breaches. Let's throw that guy. You live in an American city, or uh, American city where the majority of residents are from out of country. It's a little chaotic. Everyone has their own social contract from wherever they're from. Yeah, I guess that's true. And in Dallas, we do have a lot of people from different parts of the world. There was a really extensive Indian community in Dallas. So maybe a lot of the bad driving. I've heard that there's bad driving in parts of India. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe we have a lot of drivers from India who their social contract is get out of the way, I'm coming through. And that's the only thing they, the only contract they, uh, they recognize or something. I don't know. Turn on drone control or hacking. That might be part of the reason I have so many issues with so many drivers in Dallas. That the contract, uh, they signed a different contract than I did. I'm trying to get a couple crew kills here to make phase three a little easier. I don't want to crew kill them all, but. A goodly amount of them. Goodly. Goodly, I say. Uh, there's a market. I think you'd enjoy a Tanoi car horn that said twit louder than a cardboard beep. Market, huh? I don't know if I know that. What that, what that reference is for. Okay. How many crew are there? Three left. That guy dies. Kill that guy. Animation finishes. He doesn't die. Perfect. One crew left. Beautiful. You have a tiny car these days, and it's honestly great. You can dodge all the maniacs. Yeah, when I got my last car, I was thinking about getting, like, a Mini Cooper or a Smart Car or something. Problem is, when I look those up, those are not cheap. Those cars are actually not cheap. The tiny car does not mean tiny price. It turns out. I learned, I did not realize, tiny car does not mean tiny cheap price. At least from the ones I looked up. Here in these parts of the world, it's a lot more every man for himself. You can't say for sure you've never been there. You could have TP for phase three. Hey, what's up, Anonymous? Speak of the person who created this ship, we could TP over there. Uh, I don't have Zoltan Shield Bypass, though. I didn't buy it because I didn't even think about the fact that we did have teleporter this entire run. You love your smart car? Yeah, my cousin had a smart car. I will say... 
I don't know if I could ever have one of those because I feel like I gotta have some sort of storage. I don't need a, you know, a, a big giant truck or anything, but I was like, I couldn't even fit, like, if I played the guitar. Is there even room to fit a guitar on the back of those? There probably is. It just feels like there's no room for anything when I look at those cars. You spent uh, maybe $650 on your car this month, on your smart car, yeah. Wow, is that for like repairs and stuff? That sounds very expensive. I was just talking about actually buying the car. When you're shopping for a car, you learn smart cars owned by Mercedes-Benz, a very luxury band brand, yeah. I also looked into like electric cars and they might be cheaper like over time, but like the price of electric cars from what I saw is not cheap at all. Probably not gonna go into one of those for a while. So they're a lot cheaper and there's a lot more ways to um, have a, uh, convenient ways to recharge them when you're not at home. Um, if I do this, I believe you will run out of that room and not burn to death. It's a Fiat Abarth. So you got the timing belt change, new tires, MOT. I don't know what that is. It all adds up. Yeah. Yes. Car stuff does add up very quickly. That's true. I actually got a... I mean, I'm paying 200 and something a month just on my car note. So... Or car payment, whatever you want to call it. 24 scrap gets me nothing. But we are very um, tanky with this build, that's for sure. Very tanky. We have taken no damage boss fight so far. Your car is like a sports version of a Fiat 500. I think an electric car would be cool, but you live in an apartment, so you could never charge it. Yeah, I do too. That would probably be an issue for me as well. This black artillery should get through this uh, golden shield pretty quickly, hopefully. You know what? Let's cloak it. I think, uh... Ah, uh, never mind. I'm already too late. That one I was already gonna hit, so... Too late. Messed it up. There we go. This one will definitely last long enough. To artillery. Let's let the flak artillery finish the fight for us. We won't even uncloak. Can you do it? Flak artillery, how many shots is it? How much damage per? Is it three? Three damage. One more. GG flak artillery. From anonymous to the, what was the ship called? The charge them or just called charge on the box.com for anyone who wants to play that. Pretty interesting ship with all of the systems. That was a fun one. That was a fun one. Let's check that score. 56-19. Not bad. Two pretty high scores so far today. All of the flak. Hey, if you want me to like your viewer created chip, just put a couple flaks on it. That, that makes me happy. All right, my friends. We have time for one more. I think we're going to play one of uh, Eagle's Eye ships. I'm sending up trash dress room. Y'all feel free to grab a drink, grab a snack. When we come back, we will play another awesome shit from you. Awesome people. See you in a bit, my friends. Y'all rock. <laughs>